Hello. <laughs> Hello everyone in Facebook. Uh, so it is Tuesday again at 6.30 and uh, I am here to share some more songs and some stories as well. Uh, and of course, we always start with a smudge. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, just the land that we're standing on. So uh, we're here in Treaty 7 territory. I'm here in Treaty 7 territory. So um, I'm actually from Muskeg Lake Cree Nation, in, which is in Saskatchewan, which is in Treaty 6 territory, but I've actually never lived on reserve. We go when we visit, uh, but this, uh, I've, I've considered Calgary my home for a really, really long time. Uh, so it's really uh, been a special place for me here. So I always like to start by acknowledging the land of Pakistan, because if you don't know where you are, you don't know where you're going. So this is the home of the Treaty 7 people. Uh, we're in Treaty, Treaty 7 territory, so I acknowledge uh, all of the Blackfoot nations of this area. I acknowledge Siksika, uh, Gainai, and Bagani. Um, I have many, many friends from all of those different nations, and it's such a blessing to be able to learn from the different elders there and the knowledge keepers there and the people who share in a good way there. So I'm just really humbled and honored to be able to live here. Um, I also honor uh, the people from Susana. I've gone to many, many sweats out there. Uh, they're considered the beaver people. And I used to go uh, sage picking out uh, in Susana, uh, as well as sweetgrass picking right there along the river. So there was this little enclave where the beavers had kind of like backed up the river just enough that it was like the perfect area and so much beautiful sweetgrass grew there. Uh, but they started to work on the ring road. And so um, the beavers are like, I'm out. But I really miss having those conversations with beavers and, you know, being able to pick those medicines in a good way. Um, and there was something really special when you were out there on the land with the beavers, just listening to them build and getting mad at you and slapping their tails on the water. But it was magical. It was really magical out there. And so I'm humbled to uh, live in that territory as well. Um, and then anytime we start heading towards the mountains, we're going to pass Morley. Um, which is Stony Nakota country. So I acknowledge Chiniki, I acknowledge Bear's Paw, and I acknowledge Wesley. Uh, that nation's having a really hard time up there right now uh, with all of the virus that's happening. Uh, and so I'm going to let us much and pray for them specifically, but for everyone who's really suffering, uh, I know it's been a really hard and weird, um, you know, couple of months uh, since all of this started in the beginning of the year. Um, you know, Creator's definitely trying to teach us a lot. Mother is trying to teach us a lot. And so it's really about uh, acknowledging that and appreciating the lessons that are learned. Um, and so today, uh, we're going to be smudging, of course, this stage. Um, and I have my, my medicines set up over here, even though we're not using all of them. Uh, we're only using uh, the sage today because it is the women's medicine. But if I was doing a four directions smudge, I would use my sweet grass, of course, my cedar. Uh, my sage and my um, tobacco. So, and just a moment, Lyndon. No, you may not go on your sketch. I'm sorry, I, I'm my gonna son's go on it anyway. Um, so, I'm going to just prep a smudge here. Lyndon, can you come and smudge with me? Okay. Can you come smudge? Yeah. I think we should really put things into perspective because I think sometimes we get so reliant on like different. Um, electronics and things like that to kind of keep us entertained that sometimes we forget how we treat our family that members. was weird yeah it's really good yeah awesome <laughs> so uh again this is just staged i'm doing the blackfoot roll right now but i pre-crunched it before um and i have it in an abalone shell people are often asking what kind of shell this is it's abalone uh and it was actually gifted to me so i was very thankful for that shell yeah, there's this person in Roblox who said he can move them somewhere, so I, I'm just... convinced it might be from this, honestly. So, first of all, we're going to light it. It has all four directions in the smudge bowl. So, the medicine is the earth. The bowl is the water, because it comes with water, and it holds everything. Uh, the fire, of course, is the men's medicine. It represents fire. And then the smoke is uh, air. our prayers. It's air. It's uh, connected to our spirit. And so you'll notice I'm fanning it with my hand and never blow on it because our breath is our life. Our life is passion. Oh, ow. So. Shoot. <laughs> oh, shoot. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and smudge first. So I smudge my hand. Whoops. I forgot. 
So if you're wearing jewelry, you can take your jewelry off just because uh, metal holds energy and you don't want to hold any energy. Uh, smudging is our way to just get rid of anything that we're carrying. It's our way to pray or um, to give thanks or to just ground ourselves or balance each other out. Uh, it's also really, really healthy. So it actually kills airborne toxins like viruses, bacteria, fungus, um, and it makes the air better to breathe. The pH balances the air around us. So, and it ionizes the air, which is pretty cool. So, yay science, I love science because it proves things we've done for thousands of years. So, again, see my hands in it. Bring it over my body. One, two, three, four times for each direction. Smudge my mind so I can think clearly and learn from every person that crosses my path. Smudge my eyes so I can see all of the beauty that Creator has gifted us. Smudge my ears so it can be open to hear all of the messages Creator sends me. Very thankful for my hearing this lifetime. Smudge my nose so I can smell danger and cookies. Smudge my mouth so I speak from my true and kind words that are helpful. I was asked, is it truthful? Is it helpful? Is it kind? Is it respectful? If it's none of those things, don't say it. Don't do it. Right, Linda? Yeah. Okay. All right. Smudge my throat. So that I can remain uh, give voice to the voiceless. <laughs> also, I'm very thankful for my voice this lifetime. I said, heart, so I can remember to be kind and compassionate and show unconditional love to all of those people around me and all of those strangers I haven't quite met yet. I smudge my stomach, so all the food that I eat this day will nourish my body. I smudge my lungs, so I breathe good, clean air. As much by womanhood, because I'm very thankful to be a woman and a mother of this time. And I stretch my shoulders and my uh, back so that I can carry all of the responsibilities that Creator has gifted me with grace and humility. Okay, I will stretch my arm and my hand so I can do this good work that Creator's put me here to do in a good way. Stretch my leg so I can walk this road, road in a good way. And smudge my feet so I stay grounded and connected to Mother Earth, uh, treading lightly upon her, honoring her with every step. I'm very humble to be walking on Mother Earth. And then, if there's anyone in your life um, that you want to send extra love or attention to, you just hold them in your heart and you smudge for them as well. And smudging for uh, starting the coordination today. For many different nations that are actually going through a really, really hard time. For all people who are going through a hard time, I think right now we're starting to starting to really settle in, and um, I just want to send love and appreciation to everyone. Uh, and then, if there's anywhere in your body that you need a little extra love, a little extra help, you just smudge that as well. And then, when you're done, you say hey, hi or the glitch or merci or good however you say thank you in your language. And yeah. And so there's no right wrong way to smudge. It's just whatever feels good to you. I do quite a kind of a long smudge because I cleanse kind of every aspect of my body. But when you're in a hurry, you can just do your whole body. Um, it's really great because whenever I'm really stressed out, I tend to smudge and it just puts everything into perspective. I'm gonna smudge my stomach a lot because I want to lose weight. Okay, that too. <laughs> but um, it's good to see you too, Tanya. Um, I have a little bit of a sore throat today, so I'm going to probably not sound as strong when I'm singing, but uh, it's still really lovely to be able to share and to be able oh, to no. sing. I'm going to make like a little bit. Awesome. And so um, the first song I'm going to share is, uh, of course, the Cree welcome song, because now that we've smudged, I just want to welcome everybody in a good way. Um, and just to, you know, share this song. I love to share this song because it does. Um, usually when we share songs, we share in rounds of four, so under the four directions. But this one is sung in rounds of three, and that's to keep the circle open and welcoming so everyone completes the circle today. Because in a circle, we're all connected. There's no beginning, there's no end. No one is greater or less than anyone else in the circle, just like in the hoop of life. So it teaches us to honor each other for those differences. Because it's those differences that makes our community resilient. Because if everybody was exactly the same, the world would be just boring, and nothing would ever get accomplished. We wouldn't see all of this incredible things in the world. So it's really about that balance of coming together and engaging um, and just trusting 
in your own path and not dictating when when anybody else's path is. So this song really brings us together um, in a humble way to be able to um, honor and respect each other in that circle. Uh, and it doesn't just mean welcome, it also means beautiful. Welcome. <laughs> actually uh, written and where did my drum go? I mean, is my drum open or not? Let me check. Uh, <laughs> yep, it is. Thank you. So I'm just going to grab my drum really quick. I got it. Okay. Thank you. And if you're going to play that, you have as long as it takes me to do this podcast and you've lost it for the rest of the week. Why? Why do you think? My drum is like, 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 and in your room? Room? Okay, great. No. Okay, go do that in your room then. Okay. All right. So uh, this song is a song that I've written. And um, I was doing a project with my friend Audrey Lane um, called Wild Construct. And it was talking about kind of all the building that's happening with the ring road here in Calgary. Um, and just the impact that it's had um, on sound, on the way that we listen to things. And the one thing that um, I was struck by is the birds and just how, you know, you can usually hear them and they sound different in different seasons. But um, I was missing the fullness and the richness of uh, that cacophony of sound that sometimes they would make in different seasons. We weren't hearing as many of the birds. We weren't seeing as many of the birds. Um, even like the lack of bugs was pretty intense. And so um, I was thinking about the voices of the birds shared and how they each contribute to their community in a different way. They all call out for different things. And so um, my spirit animal being the blue jay, she warns us, she warns us what's going on. She um, mimics different birds to um, help them, to nurture them, to communicate with them. Uh, she will call, like she'll make a screeching hawk sound. So that's often what you'll hear. It almost sounds like a screeching hawk, but it's a blue jay. And that's kind of what they've been known for, that's their sound. But uh, they do that to warn different animals about different predators in the area. And so um, I was thinking about how she would warn uh, about what was coming and how it was really about um, acknowledging, you know, that voice that we uh, share, that collective voice that we share as a community. But all of the animals are part of that community and the birds are the song of that community. 
And so this is um, kind of like that bird song, that bird's voices song. We'll see if I can remember it. <laughs> I'm going to have a sip of my tea first. All right. important to acknowledge the things that uh, come through us and really trust them. There was many times that um, stories would come through me, songs would come through me, um, or teachings would come through me. And I was having a really, really hard time um, like accepting them. Um, and I was questioning where they were coming from. And so uh, once the teaching would come through me, I would run to an elder and be like, hey, this just came through me. And they're like, no, that's legit. Like, <laughs> This is a gift that you have as a two-spirit woman. These things are going to come through you. So it's really about acknowledging and accepting those gifts and knowing how they can help other people. It's not really about 
an ownership or an ego thing. It's about um, a sharing them because they need to be out in the world. And it's really about um, bringing that healing where people need it and bringing that strength and bringing that love and bringing that light. Um, and that doesn't come from a place of ego. It comes from a place of spirit. It comes from a place of your heart. And so it's really um, that song came from a place of giving voice to those animals, to really giving voice to um, the people who are struggling, the, um, you know, whether they be standing people, the trees, or, you know, the crawlers, all of those little bugs, or, you know, the, the winged people, the flying people, uh, or any of our four-legged. Um, it's really about giving them strength and giving them a voice for what's happening all around us. Uh, I think it gives us a moment to just really appreciate all of those things that have brought us here and all of those things. When we say all my relations, it's it's everything, all, all of the plants, all of the animals, Mother Earth, she's part of our relation, she's our mother. Uh, it's the wind, that's how we breathe. <laughs> it's, you know, our sister spirits there. Um, so it's really about acknowledging that. Um, and so another song that I wanted to share is the laughing song. Um, it's also called The Happy Song, and it was from the Four Winds Singers. So when I learned it, um, I was going through a really kind of hard time, uh, hard depression, and then I heard this song. And as we were trying to learn it, uh, we kept messing it up, and so we kept laughing. And it was the laughter that truly helped me heal, truly helped me go through a lot of hard things. Um, and I think when we look at music as medicine and we look at laughter as medicine, that's truly where our largest healing tools are. It's things that we have at our disposal and within us. It's uh, letting things go. It doesn't mean we're not acknowledging things that have made us sad. It's just acknowledging that we're strong enough not to let them bring us down anymore. Uh, and so um, this song, yeah, it makes me laugh. It makes me smile. And I might mess it up, which would make me laugh even harder. Uh, so let me stand up and sing it. As soon as I get this song, I have another song in my head now, <laughs> which is always funny. <laughs> song it's also on youtube as cherokee morning song uh from Robbie robertson um but it's uh it's really about acknowledging those four directions because we're a balance of all four directions when we say the four directions there's four of everything there's the four seasons there's the four elements there's uh the four parts of our being so you know our mind our heart our physical body and then of course our spirits that feel the whole thing uh it's really about acknowledging that balance you know of the water the earth the air the fire that's within us um, and this is why we smudge is to acknowledge that balance. All of the smudge holds that all of those elements, all of those things that are part of us are within that smudge and within the world around us. Um, and so this teaches us about that balance and just honoring each direction for what it is, but knowing that they're reliant on each other. We can't just be too much in our own head or just too much in our own heart because we need to be balanced. And so this is really about acknowledging that balance.
the Cherokee morning song. So yeah, for some reason, those laughing songs just wouldn't come out. Mm. That's funny how the world works. But I always say whatever's meant to be shared is meant to be shared. So you just have to kind of live in the moment and um, go with whatever your heart is sharing. And so um, I wanted to share the uh, bear song because um, I know that I've had a couple people send me messages about the bear song and just how different it is than the other bear song, but it's it's kind of the same at the same time. So I teach kind of the children's version or the community version of the song, not the prayer version of the song. Um, and so it's really about honoring the bear, about honoring the spirit of the bear who um, he prepares us for the winter. He lets us know how the winter is going to be. So if he's real fat, get ready for a cold one. <laughs> Uh, but he also teaches us what to eat, when to eat it, how to get ready, and how to really honor all of the world around us. Because the bear is, he represents community, because it's that sense of community and that ownership of community that uh, the bear provides. He knows as a predator, as a consumer, um, but he respects and honors everything. He only takes what he needs. He never takes more than his share, because he knows that if he does, then somebody else would be without and so he teaches us how to live in moderation, how that um, the earth provides us with everything that we need if we only take what we need and never more of that. Um, and so it's really about acknowledging the teachings of the bear and acknowledging the bear spirit that's in each and every one of us. Because uh, when he helps us, he comes to us when we need him. Um, if we ask for it, that sense of ownership and community. So this is the bear song. Such, such a great story. And everybody, uh, many different cultures, many different teachings have uh, different stories of the raven. And so this story might be different than one that you've heard and one that you've been told, but there's so many other great stories and each of them have different lessons for us. Um, this is the beauty about hearing a story. You might hear this story um, like this a hundred times in the same lifetime, but every time you hear it, it's going to hold a different teaching. It's going to hold a different significance because we are never the same person at any given moment. And so it gives us the tools that we need at any given time. And so you might hear that same story um, and it'll be told in different ways each time you hear it. Um, and so it's really about acknowledging and taking what you need from it at that time. And all of our stories are like that. Uh, it's not like an ace of stable where it's like the moral of the story is. Da, da, da. Uh, it's really about giving you that um, that strength and the ability to uh, take what you need. It's not about dictating those lessons, but it's about being open with those gifts. Uh, and so the Raven story, uh, a long, long time ago, of course, uh, before we were created, um, the world looked really, really different. And so um, 
the birds and the animals and the bears and everybody looked a little bit different or sounded a little bit different. And it was because they had different gifts to learn and different lessons to learn um, to be able to share with us, to be able to teach us. Because that's what the animals and the plants and all of all of creation is here for us to teach us. We've got a lot to learn. So that's what they're there for. And so the raven looked really, really different indeed. So the raven had all of these glorious rainbow feathers. And so no matter which way you looked at him, he looks like a different color. So his, his feathers not only were rainbow, but they were also iridescent. So he was super blingy and shiny. And um, because of this, every time he would catch a glimpse of himself in like a puddle of water or a river or a lake or whatever, he would just look at himself and be like, wow. I am gorgeous. I am so gorgeous. I must be the most beautiful creature on earth. Oh my gosh, because I'm the most beautiful, I must be the best. And so he started to develop a little bit of an ego. And eventually he started going around and telling everyone, oh my God, guys, have you seen my feathers? Look at me. I am beautiful and fabulous and I'm gorgeous. I am the best. I am the best animal obviously because look at me and because he kept saying that he was the best animal all of the animal, other animals go, uh, kept thinking well if raven if you're the best then what does that make me and of course the raven's like well obviously nothing so you shouldn't even try because you can never be this amazing uh, and so the animals started to feel bad about themselves and they stopped doing what made them amazing and because the animals keep the world going the birds and the bees and all of the bugs and crawlers everybody contributes to making the world work well the whole world just started falling apart because all of those little pillars that were holding up those pieces just crumbled and the bear who of course keeps that community in balance keeps everything in balance watched and as everything was falling apart apart was like whoa, 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 wait wait what is going on here why isn't anybody doing what makes them amazing and all of the animals as they would talk to uh the bear was like well the raven said that he was obviously the best animal so why should we even try and the bear said that's ridiculous nobody's greater or less than anyone else you know what let me go talk to the raven but you guys are amazing just do what makes you incredible it's not greater or less than don't compare yourselves to others we're so different just be amazing and so the raven kind of um, was off looking at himself in a beautiful puddle, of course. And the bear slowly trundled over to the raven and said, Raven, what are you doing? You're making everybody feel bad. And the raven said, why? And the bear explained, well, you've been telling everybody that they're less than you. And so nobody is doing anything that makes them amazing. Look around, raven. The earth was falling apart. And the raven's like, well, that's not my problem because I'm still gorgeous and fabulous and beautiful and obviously the best animal ever. And finally the bear's like, raven, you're not. Nobody's greater or less than anyone else. And the raven said, except for me, of course, I'm the best because like, look at me and how beautiful I am. And finally the bear was trying to reason with him for so long and his friend got fed up and was like, okay, fine. All right, uh, raven, if you think you're the best animal, well, go and catch the sun, because only the best animal can catch the sun. So if you're the best, go catch the sun. And the raven, who of course was too busy admiring himself in this beautiful pot of water, uh, was like looking at himself and kind of like, well, of course I'm the best, but yeah, I can catch the sun, because of course the best animal can catch the sun, and I am the best animal, so I'm gonna go catch the sun, because he, of course he wasn't thinking straight. And so he flew up higher and higher, and higher and as he did it got a little bit warmer and warmer and warmer but he didn't nothing deterred him he was desperate to prove that he was the best and so he flew higher and higher and higher and he got warmer and warmer and higher until his feathers started smoking oh my gosh and so he didn't he didn't care he's like no i am the best animal i can catch the sun he flew higher and higher and higher until his feathers burst into flames. And he was like, oh my gosh, I'm on fire. And then he goes down into the ocean. And as he swam to the shore and he pulled himself out, he looked down and his feathers weren't rainbow anymore. They were completely burned, completely singed. And he was mad. He was so mad. How could the bear play such a mean trick on him and make him lose his color? Well, 
he was angry. And so he started marching angrily to the bear. Well, he's a raven, so he started hopping angrily to the bear. And as he hopped along his path, because he had flown quite a ways, he started passing all of these animals that he had made feel bad. He saw as the beaver was cutting down trees and she was redirecting the river and creating all of these new streams of life. How amazing was that? He thought, wow, that's an incredible gift. And he watched as the pollinators, the bees and the moths and also the butterflies started flying around and they were pollinating all of these plants and making them grow. And he thought, wow, that's, that's amazing. Maybe they're the best. And then as he kept going, he saw how the little mouse was aerating the ground with the way she dug. And he thought, wow, that's amazing. And he saw how the birds were spreading the seeds all over. He thought, oh my gosh, that's incredible too. And then he saw as the ants were lifting so much and cleaning up all of the debris that was left behind. Wow, they're amazing too. And then he started to feel bad and he started to apologize to all of the animals. He said, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I ever made you feel like you were less than. You guys are all amazing. And then he looked down at his own feathers and he thought that I'm not amazing anymore. I'm certainly not the best. I'm nothing. And so he started to slowly, sadly, walk back to the bear. He wasn't angry anymore. He'd walked it off and apologized to all of the animals that he'd made feel bad. So by the time he got to the bear, he said, Bear, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I ever made anybody feel like they were less than. And now I feel like I'm less than. And they're all amazing. But Bear, I'm not special at all anymore. And the bear said, no, Raven, you're really special indeed because you learned a really valuable lesson. You learned about something called humility, that you're not greater or less than anyone else. Nobody's greater or less than anyone else. But it's about being humble. No, honoring the gifts that you have, but not comparing them to other people. That's humility. And the raven thought about it for a minute. Hmm, humility. Okay. And then he thought about the trick that the bear played on him. And he thought, ah, oh, I know, no animal could catch the sun. Why, why did I ever think I could catch the sun? And then he kind of started, started to chuckle a little bit to himself. And then he thought that was a really funny trick. And so... For the first time, he got his voice and he started laughing. Ah, 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 ah. And this is how the raven first got his voice. And then the raven said, you know what, bear? Humility. That's a really good lesson. And I am going to teach it to all of the two leggeds when they get here and all of the other animals by playing tricks on them. And so this is also how the raven became the trickster in so many different teachings, because he was always trying to teach people and animals a little bit of humility. And so that is the story of the raven. And so the song of the raven, um, it uh, teaches us about really honoring those gifts that we have, but also honoring the gifts that everybody else has, because they all work in unison. Uh, and it's not about judgment. It's just about enjoyment. So, yeah. So here's the raven song. Let me squeak the chair.
Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, people have been saying hello, people. So um, uh, this are one that I kind of wanted to share. Um, it's Makchi, but I think I need some uh, some harmonies for that. So I'm gonna wait until I can teach people some harmonies and then bring them in because it's it's a beautiful song, but it's very like it needs voices. It needs so many voices. Um, and I still keep the life of me cannot remember the laughing song, <laughs> which is hilarious. Hmm. Did you remember the laughing song we did? Yes. How does it go? I don't know. You don't remember? No, I don't want. No, I'm trying to remember how it goes. That's why. Oh. I cannot remember. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to sing the Thunderbird song instead. Wait, um, which laughing song? Um, the one that goes ticking and then this. Oh, she. Oh, she sounds familiar. Yes, that. No, that's the rain song. Then how? Well, then what is it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna have to bring it next week because I can't remember it to save my life. All right, but I do remember the Thunderbird song. Uh, and the Thunderbird uh, again is that spirit that leads us forward. Um, it teaches us that everything happens for a reason. So uh, there's a lot of people that have really kind of come back to what they're passionate about because we don't really have a choice other than to really reconnect with who we are and with ourselves. Uh, in recent days, and um, I'm getting things accomplished. I'm getting so many things accomplished around my house. It's ridiculous. I've done far more loads of laundry than is humanly possible, but I did it. Um, and we've been painting and really creating space. And I think we sometimes forget that our homes are our space. It's supposed to be our sanctuary. It's the place where we welcome family, welcome friends, and welcome ourselves. And so it teaches us to really connect deeply with ourselves. <laughs> and so the Thunderbird teaches us to do that. It teaches us to really assess everything that happens to us and how are we reacting to it. And so it reminds us that everything happens for a reason. And we have a choice in those moments. Are we going to learn from the things that happen to us? Or are we going to keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again until the learnings get harder and harder and harder? Uh, because that's the Thunderbird going, nope. This is the path that you need to be on. And so people think if things are too easy, then maybe they're not on the right path. But if things are too easy, you're probably on the right path because Thunderbird's not trying to mess with you. And so um, even the good things, they teach us something. The bad things, they teach us something. And it really teaches us to appreciate the lessons that come with that. So um, like I was hit by a car, you know, uh, nine years ago. And I had a choice in that moment. Um, I could either feel bad about it and be like, oh, why did this happen to me? And sulk or figure out why did this happen to me? What is the path that it's putting me? And it brought me forward to this moment. It brought me to where I could drum and sing and make drums and share teachings with incredible people from all over the place um, and to be able to share things in a good way. And I wouldn't have had the confidence or the strength, I think, to do that had it not been for that truck hitting me. It's led me on the road. Uh, no, <laughs> the path that I'm on now, and um, I'm thankful for that moment. I'm not thankful for the pain and for the multiple surgeries, definitely, but I'm thankful for the lessons that came there. And so, uh, yeah, this is the Thunderbird song. <laughs>
I'm just really thankful for everybody kind of like coming, hanging out, and letting me share songs and stories. It's been really great. Um, I'm going to sing the healing song because I think it's really important to be able to share that. Those are some of the ones that I like to share on each broadcast is, is the welcome song because that's very, very important. And where we're at now, I think the healing song is really, really important. Again, this isn't my song. I don't think anybody really owns a song. It's really about how that song can help people and how the teachings behind the song can help people. And so um, this song I had actually learned from uh, a several different elders. Uh, Karen Moore is another uh, is one elder. Uh, Olive Manitobas is another one. Um, Jerem Brutuner. Uh, there was um, uh, several, oh my gosh, so many that have actually left this world. But I still feel like they're with us. They're with us, guiding us through these times. Um, and that's the whole point of, you know, our elders. They, they stay with us. They last, whether they be in our hearts or in our minds, they, they're there. And so this song was originally um, a ceremony song, so we would only sing it in ceremony, and then uh, it started to become more and more dominant where we would actually sing it in more public ceremonies, and now um, the elders said, you know, this is needed, this song is needed, it, it helps with healing, it helps um, with understanding, it helps with healing not only our physical body, but our mind and our spirit uh, and our heart, because we, that's the only way that we can move forward is when we're all together healed as a full unit as a full community. And so it's our way to pray for each other. It's our way to pray for our world. It's a way to pray for ourselves because we think sometimes we forget to pray for ourselves. We need to do that. We need to honor that in a good way. Um, and so when we sing it, we of course sing it in the four rounds, all of the four directions. But the third round, we actually stop drumming. And in that stillness, um, I invite you to pray for those people in your life that need that healing, whether it be you know, your friends, your family, people that are suffering with mental health issues, um, that, you know, they don't have that support system that they used to. Um, I know I had a little bit of person yesterday because I'm such an extrovert. I'm like such an extrovert. And to be so contained and not be able to have those conversations and hugs and seeing people face to face every day, it's, it's hard. It takes its toll. Um, but it's the strength that we get from each other. Um, that's, really beautiful and there's all these other ways to communicate i couldn't imagine doing this 20 years ago uh where we didn't have all of these forms of communication it is such a blessing to be where we're at in this time and so we are thankful for that but when we pray for healing that's that's everywhere it's the air that we breathe it's the sun that shines it's the moon that rises and falls and controls the tides it's everything it's all of those things around <clears throat> um and we need to feel together in a good way so when I sing it, we sing it for everyone who needs to hear it. Um, and maybe some of the people who don't even realize it. So this is the healing song. It's also called the crying song or the wailing. And in it, you can hear the tears. And it's done in a heartbeat, which is a healing beat or a limit. Song. 
Um, and yeah, it's just so like light in the spirits. And remember, the best healing comes through. It comes through laughing, uh, laughing. It comes through song. It comes through stories. Uh, and really keeping yourselves, you know, honored and not rushing yourselves and don't compare yourself to anybody else, but uh, really just be in the moment and enjoy all of those beautiful things in life. Enjoy the sun on your face. Uh, enjoy really odd things that you see as you go. Like I was watching a rabbit trying to uh, over right across from a school and trying to um, go across the field in front of the school. And he couldn't because the uh, superintendent was uh, doing a lawnmower. And so he kind of sneak up behind the superintendent and the superintendent would turn around and then the rabbit would just bolt. And so I was watching this zigzagging pattern that the rabbit was doing and it was making me giggle. And so it's looking at all of those things around us that make us laugh. You know, sometimes, well, every day, the girls take my cats out on leashes. Hilarious. And the cats, all they want to do is roll around in the dirt. And that's so hilarious because I tend to sneeze and I tend to get like this. You can tell I'm kind of coughing and wheezing because of the amount of dust that's on my cats right now. So that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, just to appreciate and laugh at all of those wonderful things around you and know that our laughter is going to be what gets us through. So <laughs> this is the laughing song. channel where any of the live streams here will go there because I know it's hard to kind of like scroll down feeds um but can you just live stream, stream on YouTube? yeah my stream oh, yeah I'll do that okay yeah but uh, I think I can download these videos too and throw them up on there and then that way they're just streamlined in, in one place and so everybody can access them because uh, there's a lot of people who aren't necessarily on social media that um need the teachings and want to be able to share uh, with you know their friends and family and um you know people who for care uh, in care especially and the elderly because nobody can go visit them and it's really sad and uh next week i'll be singing outside of an old folks home um just to share some teachings with them and some songs and some stories where i will have to talk very very loudly because i will be outside but uh it should be lovely and um sending prayers and loves and hugs and kisses to everyone and i miss everyone's faces and hopefully i will see you soon Bye. Give me a glitch and
hi everyone.